Philosophy of a Nomad, Part 3. As you listen to Part 1 and Part 2, you understand it. You're going to have to come to terms with this. And when you realize that this flesh is already dead, even while you're alive, you can start to focus on what really matters. Not this world. Not your government, not your job, not your family. But what really matters is your soul. Every religion, every occult, is always has water, salt, and blood. The three main elements that really matter. And you might ask, why is this? Well, it's quite easily. Without water, life cannot exist here in the physical, material world. Water is the lifeblood of the earth. Every tree, every animal, every being that comes to existence must have this water to live. But what is this water? It can be solid and material, something you can actually touch. It can be translucent, something you can go through, but feel. And it can be like vapor and steam, where it cannot really be seen by the naked eye, but it penetrates even through the hardest materials known to man. Water is like a spirit. Water is the life. And you must drink of the life to be able to exist. The human body is made up of roughly 75% water. Without that water, you will surely die. And that water is very important. That water is not something material. That water is spirit itself. And if you do not drink of the spirit of life, you're already dead. You might ask about blood. God said when you kill an animal, let the blood hit the ground, for life is in the blood. Christians would say that life in the blood is through the sacrificial death of God himself. So what is the blood? Without blood, you surely can't live. If you bleed to death, you lose your blood, your heart does not pump, it does not keep going. Is there? So is blood really physical and material? Is it something that can be whole? No, it is spirit. Life always remains in the blood and in the water. It can go through the physical plane. It can keep moving through life. Death cannot hold blood, nor can it hold water. It transforms into the spirit and becomes what it really is. That's why every occult uses sacrifices of blood or water because they know the magic behind some kind of water and blood has some significance to getting answers that they're really looking for. But if they really look, they don't need to do these rituals 
It would just know that life is in the blood and in the water. That's why you must be baptized with water. Not physical water, but baptized by spirit. You must be baptized in blood. You must give up your sacrificial life here. Forget this world and gain the real life in the spirit. If you don't get those things up, how are you ever going to spot? How are you going to know the truth? Salt. The body is made up of salt as well. It is a conductor for the blood and the water. It creates the electrical current that runs through your body and throughout all things on earth. Salt is a spirit that connects you to the truth. That's why it's important. That's why religions and cults find it important. But they don't understand why. They know it has some kind of key element, but that is the reason. Water is the flow of the spirit. Blood is the heart of the spirit. And salt is the conductive energy of the spirit. This is what really matters. You might go even farther and call it the breath of life. In the breath, we consider oxygen. It can be seen. can't really be felt. You have to have faith that it actually exists. But you know if you don't breathe it, you're dead. But if you don't have the breath of life, which is the spirit that comes upon you, and you don't awake to the spirit, you're already dead. To get through death, you must have these elements of the spirit, the breath of life, the water of life, the blood of life, and the salt that preserves your life. I may sound crazy, but when you give up this world, you have a lot of time to think and ask questions that really matter. And if you ask these questions, you're going to come to the same results. To be able to live forever, you have to become spirit. You have to wake up who you were, who you are, and who you're going to be. Because as long as you hold on to this life, You became it, you're living it, and you're out of it. And that's it. Is that all you want? Is that all you want to become? A material being that becomes a material soil that refurnishes the flowers and the animals? You know there's more to life than this. Why are you afraid to look at it? When you face death and you face the fear that you've always feared, you're going to overcome it and find life. And that life is through God. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking about truth. Think about it. Contemplate on it. Don't take my word on it. Stop doing what you're doing on a daily basis and start asking the questions. 
and you'll become a nomad as well. You'll be disconnected from this place as well. And eventually you will become an outcast as well. And eventually they will call you crazy. Just like they called the prophets crazy. They called Jesus crazy. For Paul says he's insane for the gospel. Because he's come to the term. He lives and dies for Christ. So that he can live and raise the life in Christ. Because he becomes aware of the Spirit. It matters little if you have a lot here or nothing here. What really matters is what you got here. And what you're thinking here. It's just going to create what you're doing here. Do you have the flesh of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit? Or do you have the fruits and the flesh of the flesh? Do you desire what you desire? Or do you desire what the Spirit is? The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. No, the flesh will die. But your, but your spirit is willing to keep going on and on. But only if you're allowing it to work within you. To open your eyes to who you are and what you are. And when you come to these terms, all your labors and all your toils, they don't add nothing. So why invest in something you know it's going to be a bad return? What guy on Wall Street invests on something he knows is going to fall? It's common sense. So why are you spending so much time investing in this life? In your job, in your family, in your careers, whatever you're investing in in you. You know it's not going to give you a good return. Invest in what really matters. The breath. The water. The blood. And the salt. Invest in the spirit. And you will overcome this. I know a lot of you don't want to talk about Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ never came here to teach a religion. He actually stood up against it. He warned you of it. He saw the hypocrisy of it. So why are you fighting God? You should be fighting religion like he fought it. He stood up against it. The prophets stood up against it. They were liars and they were thieves and they were murdering the truth to gain power and control and money to fend for their own earthly, fleshly lives. God is a government. He is a king in a kingdom. We call it heaven. He has an army of angels. He has ambassadors. He has a senator, as you call elders or priests. He has a council. He has a law. There is a judge that upholds that law. There is an adversary, a state's witness, against anybody who breaks that law. Where is a religion in this? So don't hate Christ. He's not here to help you. He's here to show you the truth. Religion is not your answer. The Spirit is. And the Spirit is willing to wake you up. That's why Christ says, wake up. Oh, you sleeper. Reject this world. Get rid of this world. A camel cannot enter the eye of a needle carrying stuff on his back. It was a gate and the camel couldn't go through with stuff on his back. You have to release from this world. 
everything, even your thinking. That is true repentance, folks. And that's the mind 